<laughs> Welcome back. It's the last session. It's gone. It feels like it's gone really quick. We've really enjoyed hearing from people. Um, so we just thought you wouldn't think so, given how much we've yapped on. Sorry. Yeah, no, but I, I want to hear from more people. So um, if there's anyone else that wants to share anything or ask anything, please do so. Claire. Hiya, yeah, I'd love for you to help me make sense of something because I know that I'm making a jigsaw in my head. It's nearly a new insight but I'm just a bit, I'm falling short of it. And I'm sure you'll probably know what it is. Um, this morning when we started, Paul and I had had words <laughs> um, because he was just a grumpy bastard. Um, and, and I realized this afternoon, I realized this afternoon that after what you said, Jenny, and a couple of other speakers, and Lisa said that I can't accept Paul when he's in a bad mood because he, he's, he's got this thing where he is always right and he will, oh, he sucks the life out of me because he's got to be right and he will go on and on and on. And because I won't agree with him, he'll just, it's just an awful feeling for me. Um, and I noticed this morning, after this full weekend, I let it, I let it go a bit, and then I started to get really pissed off and just thought, for fuck's sake, haven't you learned anything? And then I realized, having listened, that I can't accept my negative emotions, so I, I can't accept his either. And with this learning, although I've only been around it for a few months now, I've gone 100% down the spiritual part. Yes, I get the spirituality part because then I can be my hippie self and I can just buy into that. And I'm on my own a lot and I love it. But today I've realized that there's two parts of me. I have got a human part as well. And I think, Jenny, when you speak, like, I really realized that I am a human as well. And I've got a, and you said something this morning, um, Dave, made to live, you're made to live, like the full experience, the whole thing, the whole spectrum of colors and feelings and emotions. And, and I can't, I haven't been able to accept that. I just want the beautiful, sweet ones. And now knowing the little bit that I do, I feel like I need to maybe go back to being human and not sell myself out. And um, do you know what I mean? Do I, am I making any kind of sense whatsoever? Perfect sense, I think. Like one of the things I remember my sister saying to me when I used to hate on my humanness my body and all of that should say you know this is the house of your soul and i'd be like blah 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 whatever i just want the soul bit i just want the spiritual bit i just didn't want to have to have dark feelings or horrible emotions i just wanted the nice stuff and through this understanding it's like you you get to embrace all of it and like there's times when we've had conversations and i said the times actually is especially like as teenagers when everything did get dark and used to put on like really melancholy collie music and like wallow in your own self-pity like there's some kind of enjoyment in that like just feeling it and we can just be present with anything and this idea that there's like spiritual feelings and non-spiritual feelings or the spiritual self and then the human self like there's one true self expressing in many ways and I think it's it's so cool that you've seen like wow I'm not very tolerant of other people's low moods because I'm not tolerant of my own. Like what a cool thing to become aware of. Like it's we're then like right now what do I do about that? But the the awareness is it. You're aware. Wow, that's a cool thing to see. It's really cool. And to know that that's enough. Like we don't have to now try and go on to work to being more human or being more tolerant or more or, spiritual. 
like to know that the awareness is enough like wow what a cool thing to see a belief that you've lived blindly out of not knowing has suddenly been revealed to you and then to see how life starts to look when you recognize the beliefs is incredible the changes that can start happening while we're minding our own business so thank you for sharing like, i've loved everything you've said oh certainly and i think that's a really beautiful point because it can be quite a thing you know oh well i'm spiritual and they're not no right there we create a duality in wholeness in totality in universe singular verse one you can't have a duality it doesn't exist and so it's like we people would say oh, are you spiritual yeah so is this pen so is this paper so is the laptop so is my mobile phone so is Saturn then what? What are we going to do with that spiritual? It's not a case of, you know, people, people often mistaken spiritual for beliefs, mistaken spiritual for, which I fully endorse, dancing around fires naked, but get on with it. Sign me up. You know, being spiritual is talking slowly and in a different voice. You know, being spiritual is practice of some description. No, they're all ways of reminding ourselves. It's like in the Jewish traditions, they have how many different laws per day? Is, is there any Jewish people on how many different laws are there per day to kind of get through observe. to observe and to practice? Is there anybody on who's Jewish? So that's a lot. Right. It's so many per day, even down to tying your shoe, left shoelace first. Left shoelace first, yeah. You know, and we can very easily mistaken that for the spirit, a spiritual thing, or that this is dead spiritual if you tie your shoelace first. No, it was never intended for anything like that. These are reminders. They're an attempt to remind people who are, who are um, on, and looking in the direction of spirit of what they're looking at, what they're looking for. It's not a spiritual isn't a practice spiritual is all things there is no outside of spiritual the spiritual is just a word to describe that that cannot be known that that must that that creates the illusion of separation that that creates the illusion of self is spiritual is but ego is still spiritual there is no outside of spiritual there is no spiritual self and non-spiritual self that's just all part of the illusion Everything, every moment is a spiritual event taking form, showing up in an infinite amount of ways. <clears throat> but I can, I can kind of come back to the, to the argument part. Of course, Paul doesn't back down. He thinks the way he sees the world is real. So does Claire. This is why we have arguments. This is why everybody argues, because we get we get so bought into our reality being a fact. And those people who struggle the most are those that live in the tunnel of belief. The narrow minded, ah, oh, once I've made my mind up, that's it, you know. I'm really, str I'm really strong, you know, once I've made my mind up, I never changed my mind. That's the biggest friggin' weakness any human being can ever carry. arrogance, fixed mindedness, some of the most lost egos on our planet. They tend to be the ones that run the country. <laughs> In my opinion. I look at these people who are going up for, I often say, those that go for president or prime minister of any country, 
it should be like, if you want to be president or prime minister, yeah, okay, can you just sign this register, please, and go and stand over there? Anybody who wants to be in control of people, I always think, I must be on some mad ego trip. I don't really think they're the people who should be governing people. That's just my, that's just an opinion. It's not a truth. There's some really fantastic MPs out there. They really do want to do good. But you see, the argument is born of misunderstanding in the belief that the way I see it is fixed and true. And of course, it looks fixed and true. It looks real. This is why people have never seen reality, understood reality before, because, because it looks so real, we've never questioned it. From the moment we're born, it looks real. It looks true. The way we see the world is fact. What? You don't see? What the What's wrong with you? How, why would you do that? Why would you say that? Are you stupid? They're off their heads. Well, it looks real to them. It looks as real to them as it does to us how we see it. In their reality, in their little world. Oh, they live in their own world. Correct. Full stop. <laughs> so do I. You see, it's sneaky. It's a sneaky little game. Thanks for sharing, you two. Lee and Lou. Or Lou. Yeah, just um, I was going to mention this earlier, actually, and just on the back of what um, Claire you shared there, I remembered it yesterday when Dickon was speaking, and one of the things that um, I'd struggled with after I started sort of really, um, having an understanding of this, I couldn't get my head around how, how um, like exactly what you were saying, Claire, in terms of like Lee's behaviour looked like it was really affecting me. Like I would um, be in this beautiful space or like just be really enjoying life. And then it looked like Lee was constantly pulling me into his like thought storm, into his like crap. And it was like, well, how, like, how is this affecting me so much? And it was actually on the um, retreat with you guys, um, Jen and Dave, when Dickie was there in person, I remember asking him the question because he was talking about thought storms and I could recognize how I was sucked into my own thought storms quite a lot of the time but it looked to me like Lee was constantly pulling me into his when I didn't want to go there and I remember saying to him how do I how do I stop myself being pulled into somebody else's thought storm um, because it looked like that would happen um, like all you know all the time and 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 he, I remember him saying to me and he mentioned yesterday as well this thing about just falling fully open to life and he said you know what if in those moments you allowed yourself to fall fully open to life in that moment and I realized that what would happen Lee would do something that that I didn't like or that affected me and instead of me dropping fully into that experience I would completely contract into myself and into me and into my rightness and, and into my own world which was then me falling out of falling completely into separation and into this thing of you're doing this to me and you're making me feel this this way and and when he said that like it was I could I could see the times I was doing it where there were things that that I didn't like or things that looked like they were happening and I'd go into myself as opposed to fully you know falling wide open and I think that's one of the things that that I still continue to see now with this understanding is the moments of thinking that I know something or the moments of thinking that things are a certain way or are meant to be a certain way I go into a complete contraction that takes me further into separation and thinking it's all his fault or someone else's fault or you know and it, it, when he said that yesterday it really reminded me of that insight I had in that time of I, I think I was a, I was afraid 
that he had control over my emotion and how I was feeling and, and how could he do this to me and not see this and take me out of my beautiful space. And, and I, and I realized that I was doing that in, in not dropping through it. So, you know, that was, um, yeah, something that really had a big impact on, um, us. change, yeah, on <laughs> us and changed the way that, and through me seeing that, that that did still happen like there would still be times where I was in this beautiful space and Lee would kick off or just be like moody or come out with something stupid that before would have really pissed me off and it was almost like it literally just just went through me and it didn't <laughs> it didn't have the effect and because of that changing within me the outcome of what used to happen then changed You bastard, me. I think what it is now, I'm just perfect and I never upset. <laughs> you know, you can see it, can't you? I'm caught in Jesus again. Again, not talking religion. But I think you'll see the, I think you'll see the point that this man was trying to make when he said, it is done unto us as we believe. It is done unto us as we believe. I can't think, I think it's one of the most simple ways you could put this. As we believe, so reality appears to us. It is done unto us as we believe. If we believe, Lee affects us. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. It's done unto us. If it looks like we're a victim of a, a relationship problem, it is done unto us as we believe. The thing is, once we start believing, once we start to see through the notion of belief, which is what Molly was trying to wake people up to, was start to wake up to see your divinity. Go, go beyond your ego, your beliefs, and you'll find your divinity. And you'll see that within that divinity, the divinity has the capacity to think. That's the visible expression of consciousness and the invisible expressions of consciousness that is experienced. Where beliefs are formed, when we start to buy into the thought and think it's real, it is done unto us. The world appears to us as we believe. It's a similar thing to what Einstein said when he said, first thing you have to work out is, do you live in a hostile universe or a friendly universe? Is the universe friendly or hostile in your world? It is done unto you as you believe. People who believe the world is a terrible place, they see it everywhere. They see the negative in everything. We all know these people. And then there's these people who come along and they see beauty because they believe in the beauty of life and they just see it. Oh, don't come near me with your happiness and joy in there. It is done unto us as we believe. And this is why everybody sees a different reality because we all believe different things. We all think different. I think it's such a freeing thing to realise how much of the time we've spent in our lives thinking, I need you to be okay so I can be okay. I need you to show up in the world in a particular way because then I feel good. Or if you show up like that, then it means I can't be happy. And I think that was the... seeing the impersonal again. And I think Sasha and Mike were on the retreat that we did down at Stoke by Nayland and we realised it all then comes back to it's all about me. I want you to be happy and in a good mood so I can feel good. I don't want you to behave like that because I want to feel good. Like it's, and it's innocent, but I, I, I can see how we innocently get like self-obsessed. And when we fall off our mind and we're just in life, things are so much easier. And like I have a friend who, whenever she used to phone me up, there was always some drama and I would feel like I was dragged into it and dragged down by it. And I think I've mentioned it before, but it was 
they phoned me at about half past eight in the morning and I was getting ready to, to speak at the big conference in London. So I didn't really have much time. So I was kind of getting ready and I had it on speakerphone and I just listened. And by the end of the like 40 minute call, this person had like talked themselves around really. And I didn't even need to say anything. And I remember saying this to a lady called Linda Ramos, who I think I mentioned the other day, and she said, yeah, you, you didn't need them to be okay for you to be okay. Like, you were just neutral when you listened and they found their own way. And when we start to see that, like, you and I can have bad moods and then the other one not have to get in the bad mood with us. Like, it's really nice. Like, I can still be kind to you if you're being grumpy and you can still be kind to me if I'm being ridiculous. Like it's it's a very different way of of being and i think it it's that freedom like we little rach who spoke on our last retreat saw that they did a whole class at school about to show that you care you have to worry to show that you're really listening and caring about the person you should sort of get in it with them and she was the only one in the class that said that wasn't true Including the teacher. Include, yeah, including the teacher. She said she just saw it. Showing, the, like, worry is not showing you care. They're two very different things. And I think the freedom of being able to be in life around people, because I used to feel like big groups of people de-energised me. I couldn't do big groups of people. It made me feel de-energized and tired. And it was the energy of the group that de-energized me. And one of the insights I had at a big group was how much thinking do you do about big groups of people and how they de-energize you and how uncomfortable and shy you feel? And is it the big group or is it my mind? And then I remember being out, I was in Marbella for my cousin's Hindu and I don't drink so I was out this massive apparently world famous club there was like dancers everywhere there was really loud music and I just sat there and I felt so peaceful and I got up and joined in dancing for a bit and then I didn't feel like it so I just sat down I think I stayed until about four in the morning and a couple of others were tired so we went home and I just thought wow like I'm not de-energized I don't feel uncomfortable. I feel absolutely at peace. And I think that's the beauty, like the, the evidence for this is everywhere. Like it, it looks like that creates my feeling, but then we'll have an experience where that feeling doesn't show up and we're in that situation. Where does experience come from? Where is it born? Where does it come from? And we get to see it again and again and again. Like I often say Rusty's a really good judge of my mood because Normally he can do no wrong and I make excuses for him, everything that he does. If I'm getting annoyed with Rusty, I know I'm not in a particularly good mood because generally he cannot do any wrong. But it's like you, you see that the same thing can happen and we have a different experience of it. That's the freedom. Without judgment. That's also the thing to look at. It's the inside nature, like the, the within part. And that, that goes with us. I always remember when I was 19, I booked this year travel. I was so excited. I was like, God, I'm going to be so cool when I go there. I'm going to get to South Africa. I'm going to be cool. I'm going to be a traveler. This is going to be amazing. And I remember arriving in Cape Town and being like, fuck, I'm still me. I've taken my head with me. Like I'm not suddenly a different person. But that's also the good news. Like, our mind goes with us wherever we go and our mind is free and our mind can think again and we can have new experiences and I remember going back to Cape Town with you and just being like Fuck it, how did I not see this how did I not realize how incredible this place was like I knew it was beautiful but wow like I was so present there and you realize like god have I been in where have I been I remember driving back into my village after coming across this. I'd lived there since I was three. I was 23 when I came across this. And I was like, look how beautiful it is where I live. Oh, look at all these thatched roofs. Look at these massive fields. And it's like, where have I been for the last 20 years? 
I've not been present in life. I've been, a, it's been about me, how I'm feeling. I don't feel very good, I'm depressed, I'm not good enough, nobody likes me. I'm not thin enough, I'm not this enough. Like, I've been in therapy for it for years. And I couldn't fix myself because I wasn't broken. And just realizing that, like, you get, you get, you get given your eyes and it's in any moment you get to see again and have this fresh perspective not tied or limited by anything you've thought before completely new in this moment you can see anything and anyone in a different way people that i've found irritating in my life i've then had moments when i've got to see them with absolute love and compassion and understanding and they look different and I get filled with that feeling. And I remember hearing Keith Blevin say at a conference, we're the first recipient of what we think. And on the same talk, he said, holding resentment is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And I saw how much I'd done that in my life. <laughs> but it's almost the fact that it's an inside job is the good news because we are connected to, we are part of, we are that source. And it runs through everything. Any more questions or comments? I've got a really quick one if nobody else wants to jump in. Well, sorry, so I did text. Yeah, sorry. So, um, so what about when, so that's the thought thing and, and I get what Louise has said and I get, well, I'm, I'm getting it, it's, it's going. And what Jenny said. But what about just the simple thing of when you're standing with somebody or in somebody's presence and they're just literally the senses like it's too loud for my head or it's just uncomfortable, like just the sense, sensory thing, even if I'm not thinking anything about him or defending myself or wanting to change anything. It's just an awful place to be. Um it's kind of like me walking into a room with like really heavy metal on. I just don't want to be in that room. Do you know what I mean? Are you saying you just absorb things that and just let it sort of just not lit? <laughs> Do you see what I mean? To say to absorb, would that not suggest that there is something external to your being that is generating you an experience? You, if you really look at reality, you'll see it's an experience. It's happening right now. Right now, this is it taking place. It's here. It's not some far off thing. It's not something you're going to get in the future. It's an ever present thing. You know, it'd be quite interesting because I'm sure that sometimes you'd enter that kind of scenario and it would appear not quite as heavy. And sometimes you just get to the point where you've kind of gone through it for a bit only to lose your shit 10 seconds later. And sometimes you maybe walk straight into it and lose your shit. Sometimes you might walk into it and it's not as bad as what I'm normally expecting. And you see that the, there is no other place that reality can be generated for us than within ourselves. It's a, it's a closed loop. It's a hundred percent. Reality is born from the spirit, the energy. Take away the energy from the physical body, you have death. That vessel, as Lisa called Ben, her dog, that vessel is just that. It's useless without the spirit, the breath of life. 
the light of life, consciousness, Holy Ghost, whatever you want to call it. It's useless. Doesn't do anything. Feeds worms. Useful, I suppose. But it doesn't live. So whilst we're in this living state, let's become aware of this. What is life? If you find the answer to what is life, you find the answer to what is reality. You see the two are the same thing. When you start to look for life, you would never look for life, your life, outside of yourself. It's obvious. Where are you? You don't go, I'm over there. I am you, pissing me off. We know that the reality that we encounter is we know that our life is taking place within from within our being when we start to wake up to that we start to wake up to that life and reality are fundamental to one another you take away either both disappear because they're one the one and the same thing So when you start to look at that, you realize that this is entirely an internal expression. It's entirely an internal job. Tap the heart. It's not the heart. We talk as human beings, so we talk about it. It's not in the physical. It's what enlivens the physical. I just wanted to add, like last the last uh, retreat we had, we had someone called Kim Bailey on, who um, facilitates this down in Basildon and really deprived areas, and she works with a lot of people with the, within domestic violence and those kind of things. And she said, "It's she goes, I'm not telling you what to do. Like, if you're in a violent relationship and you need to get out, like, I'm not saying you have to see that it's all thought and stay." She said, "But the women." find their own way they start reacting different and so it's quite an extreme example but it was so cool to hear her speak because she just said the wisdom within these women that she worked with was just phenomenal they knew how to live their life so she taught them about the principles she taught them about the nature of their own mind and then they navigated their relations relationships dif uh, differently some of them had stayed within and made changes some of them had left and she said that was the beautiful thing. Just wake up to your own intelligence. Wake up to what's already within you. Like, don't see this as now I understand, then I must. Or not, like, I, st I don't choose to go clubbing. I don't, it's not something like, just because I experienced that peace in that moment, if it wasn't the club, it was where my mind was at. And like the other day when we were doing stuff in the van, you just wanted to get it done. And you were being really grumpy and arsy. And I was like, I'm just going to go and ask Lisa if she's got some string. <laughs> and I went and stood in the caravan with Lisa and I was like, God, he's in a bad mood. <laughs> so much nicer being in this caravan with you. Like, and we had a right giggle and had a bit of a laugh. And then I went up and made a cup of tea and took it down to you. And then I was like, oh, do you want something to eat? And I went and made some food. And I didn't want to be around it. I didn't want to be around that bad mood. Like, there really isn't any rules. Like, I don't want to... Like I said with my sister with her kids, sometimes they were being so outrageous. She's like, right, you can totally feel that, but can you go and do it in your room? I don't want to be around it. I don't want to listen to it. Or she'd take herself off. Or she'd lock herself in the bathroom just so she had five minutes without them. But it's like, don't feel like there is then, I have this understanding, so therefore. No. Like, and every single moment is a new moment. And what comes to us to do, what we're moved to do will be different. I think there can be often in this conversation, people are like, right now I see that it's just thought. So I, I could enjoy this job. So I should stay in this job until, because my thought could change and make me love it suddenly. Or people sit around waiting for their thought to change. You know, that's another thing we see people doing, isn't it? Oh, waiting for the thought to change. Wait. Yeah. I should be okay yeah. in this situation. I should be, I should be okay here. 
it's like no there, there's no rules to this those are just concepts and beliefs that we've dreamt up that hold us prisoner but it's like you just you start to see that you know if it feels like it's overwhelming and overbearing it honestly it, please don't just take our we don't want anybody to believe anything that we've said this isn't a please don't believe anything we've said just line it up against your own experience and see if it rings true if it does cool if it doesn't cool but that experience is coming from you either way it's coming from thought if you believe it it's coming from thought if you don't believe it, it's coming from thought you realize it's it's all coming from thought feels overwhelming even if it feels overbearing yeah it's coming from us it's coming from thought the way we're perceiving that moment perception again go back to perception reality is perception beauty is in the eye of the beholder true it's not you it's me those words that everybody hates to hear when they split up. Die, oh, cop out. No, no truer words ever said. Don't say that to me, that's a cop out. No, there's just no truer words ever said. It's not you, it's me. Of course it is. Thanks, Clay. Is that all right, look? I think that's the best the best thing that anybody could ever realize is you can't do life it just does and allowing the space for it to be anything it can just change it will just change and flow and at the same time you can be an active participant in it totally it's that back to neither right nor wrong neither true nor false do you know what is beautiful about it? it? It allows the space to be able to apologise, which is great. Sorry, I was going to be dick. Oh, all right. You know, this lady here, this one, beautiful creature. Who lives with you? Sister Anna. Oh, Sister Anna. Where is the she, she, Yeah, she lives with me. She's actually an artist. She actually do this painting behind me. Here, Huna, she's an amazing, incredible artist. But once when I was having a really bad time and quite long, probably about 15 years ago, and I was taking a load of stuff on board. And God, she's, why can't she just be different? Why does she always have to be so horrible to everybody? Can't she see what she's doing to her mother? She's, she's destroying her. She's always doing this, that, and the other. And Anna just got hold of me. She went, Lisa, that is not your ship to carry. You can make a choice. You can either see that that's going on in her, and you can carry on living your life, or you can pick it up and smear it all over your face and walk around with it, smooth it all over your face. What do you want to do? Where do you want to live? And I was like, wow, it's not mine to carry. I've got my own. <laughs> Cheers, Lou. Anybody else? Anybody who hasn't spoken already? Hello. Uh -huh. Hi. Hold on, I'll just move out of the kitchen. The hand up, I didn't see that. Yeah, no, it's okay. I'm just moving out of the kitchen. <laughs> Back into my other room. Um, hi. Yeah. Um, 
I, I liked what you said about, um, you were talking about, uh, I can't remember exactly, but something about nature and how birds or certain parts of nature have this innate wisdom and intelligence. And what actually occurred to me is that we're not separate from nature. We're actually part of nature. And we tend to think that we're separate from nature. And just like everything in nature, and most of us will agree that everything in nature runs to a natural rhythm and it's taken care of and it has the ability to sort itself out in the best way. We too also have that ability um, because we're part of nature, not separate to it. Yeah. What a lady. You're a lady after my own heart. Mm. I, love, I love that. I, I, I keep saying some of the, my biggest insights have been come through observing the natural world, realizing we're not separate. You know, we simply call it the natural world right there in those two words we create a distinction of separation. The natural world and our world. Ah, there's not two worlds, it's one world. You know, you know, we, we, we throughout time through ignorance have done a massive disservice to the our rest of our brothers and sisters of other species and genuses and kingdoms on this planet, all born of the same same force, that virgin birth stuff, force that just enlivens and gives birth to life itself. It's like, we've done it disservices by saying things like, animals don't, don't put human emotions and feelings onto animals. Don't assume they feel the same as us. Oh, we're making this distinction between the human being and an animal now. All oh, right, so we're not of the animal kingdom. All oh, right, so we're not mammals. Okay. Okay, so are they really human feelings or are they feelings of beings? You know, it, when you start to bring up the notion that you've brought up there Raha. it's like this takes this conversation out of the human and it makes it big you ask big questions you get big answers and it's like when you start to see that the other things we've said is that animals don't work on thought they work on instinct okay two points to this first of all we flippantly say that animals work on instinct. What the hell is instinct? What is this force of guidance that allows beings to fly from Doran's house, house in South Africa all the way up to the Lake District, like a swallow, mm. all the way from South Africa to the same nesting site where it nested? What sensory experiential reality is that organism experiencing? Because I know that the reality that is experiencing is very, very different to my own. But it's real to it. It's real. Instinct. Instinct is a flippant word that we throw around for thought that we do not understand, for, for aspects of consciousness that we have got no understanding about, so we flippantly give it a title, and we call it instinct, and we sweep it underneath the rug without giving it a second thought, as though it's something lesser than the human ability to think. Oh, it's all thought. Every single being is a conscious thinking being. Rusty has the full spectrum of emotions that I do. He gets angry, he's loving, he gets scared, he gets excited, he wants to go and play. He gets fed up, he gets grumpy. He's not different. He doesn't dwell on his emotions and make 
He yeah. doesn't analyze them like we do. We, we think that our emotions are saying something good or bad about us. Yeah. That, you know, oh, I'm a good person because I'm having this emotion or I'm a bad person. I shouldn't be having this emotion. I, I should be calmer or more patient or whatever. That's so. right. You say you, Rusty's taught you so much. Just how forgiving he is and like, he's always, like that time where you and him fell out and you'd really shouted at him because he, he killed the, the killed, beautiful dove. Killed the dove. And then later on, like I was still holding a grudge against Dave for being horrible to Rusty. And uh, Rusty like came in, checked where, where Dave was at and then started wagging his tail and went up to him and loved him again. And I was like, wow, I've been holding on to this and judging Dave for being, you know, you were sad, you were really sad. But yeah, just watching Rust going in and out of his different moods and how loving he is and how loving he can be. Not with everyone, as Anna knows. Hey, don't forget. Sorry. <laughs> I just asked if you could speak to her. Can I just add to that? <laughs> Rusty, don't hold a grudge. <laughs> he doesn't forget. He doesn't forget. He doesn't forget. Oh, he has memory. But no, you. As far as I'm concerned, right, this, you see, if, 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 if human beings tomorrow woke up and did realise the non-separation between humanity and the natural world, it is an illusory state of thought. It's a thought, is that separation. It doesn't truly exist. It's a thought. Which is why as we decimate this planet, it affects us because we're all so we are all intrinsically one. You know, it's like if humanity woke up tomorrow and realised that every other being, an ant, is a separate reality. To the ant, its entire experiences, its entire world, its entire life, its entire reality. A tree is a conscious thinking state capable of awareness and fear. Peace. How can you know that? Observe it. Observe the tree, observe a plant. Anybody familiar with the plant Mimosa? Steen, you're nodding your head, Mimosa. They call it the sleeping plant. Yeah, that's it, man. It's got a leaf, kind of, no, you can't really draw it. It's got a leaf. And this plant, as you brush up against it, it closes up and then faints. Closes up and faints. Right in front of your eyes. Instant behaviour. Consciousness awareness. Conscious awareness of threat. So the moment it feels something brush up against it, it hides itself into the ground and just buries itself there. And after about five minutes, it comes back up and opens back out again. How could that do that without awareness? How could that do that without the thought, thought to act now, without the thought that I've been brushed up against or eaten? See you, Cheryl, love. And then remember, I bought my sister a mimosa plant. She called it Gilbert. And it got to the point where at least when she opened up a caravan and she walked through, the vibration within the caravan was enough to kind of make Gilbert get shy and hide. But then after a while, it learned that it didn't need to hide every time the caravan shook and it just stayed open. And Lise could kiss it. Lise could go up and kiss it. And when she first kissed it, it closed. But after a while of being kissed, it stopped closing up. It learned. There wasn't a threat there. But when I kissed it, it did. It knew the difference between me and Lisa. Gilbert's dead. I'd love to be able to prove this point, but I can't. Gilbert died. Gilbert did die. Really sorry. But the awareness within that plant was the same awareness that enlivens us. You know, the ant, same thing. We got, we got to make, we got to have this realisation as people. 
because our ego is destroying this planet. It's destroying our, our own lives and it's destroying this planet, this beautiful creation. And we have the freedom to do that. That's what's given. So it's given to life, the freedom to do it. Ultimate freedom. Even the freedom to go and destroy it. Physical structure. You cannot destroy its spirit. We can never destroy its spirit. And it's so, such a beautiful thing as you speak, Raha. It's like you start to see this as you observe and become aware. So science now has seen that there is a mold growing in the Fukushima reactor in Japan. In the, one of the most toxically radiated places on the planet, there's a mold growing. Life is taking off. And in the place in the Ukraine, after Chernobyl, we were said there would never be life there for thousands of years. It's thriving with life. And the life is immune to the radiation it's showing no signs of problems we're dealing with a deep intelligence here we're dealing with an intelligence beyond our little intellect and thinking we know something that's what dickon describes as wisdom this deep intelligence that enlivens and drives forth life That force of, force of life that exists within the heart of all beings, all things. I think that's a really beautiful point, Raha. Thank you so much for bringing that up, and I love your poetry. I know it's touched a couple of people. Credit for that. Somebody sent that to me. Beautiful. Yeah. Get it. Love it. Yeah. Thank you so much, love. Well, Thanks for being part of this. Thank you <laughs> for holding it. No, you're welcome. And there was just one other thing I want, uh, just wanted to add about our thinking that we think, I mean, and, and I used to say this all the time, oh, I just can't help it, you know, like being impatient. I was. I would say I was impatient and I used to label myself that. And people used to label me as well. And when I realized that actually my natural state is patience, but for my thinking, that was a real eye opener. And then after that, it was like, I would say, well, I just can't help it. And then it was like, well, actually that's not true because there are certain thoughts I do take note of like a thing like, um, uh, no, it could be like, I might go against the thought, oh, I shouldn't have another piece of chocolate, but I do. So I ignore that thought. And it could be like, I really ought to wake up now and go for a run. And depending on how I'm feeling, I might listen to that thought and go along with it, or I might just ignore it and like, oh no, staying in bed. So we do, we do that all the time with our thoughts without even being aware. And then we think when this other uh, thought comes up, oh, I can't handle it. I just can't help it. it, you know. But actually we can. Um, it's, it's an observation you and I have shared, isn't it? We can be really lazy with our minds. I find myself, I can be so lazy with my mind. It's like when you start to, when you wake up to that point, it's like, you start to use your mind a lot wiser. Beautiful, thank you, lovely. Thank you so much. Anybody else?
I just wanted to ask people if they would mind um, just for one minute, um, either closing your eyes or you can turn your screen off. Um, if we could just, I don't know why it's occurred to me and I've checked, there's a lady on this call who's a really dear friend, could really do with some love and prayers and healing right now. She's um, a beautiful young woman called Marlin who's in Sweden. And if just for one minute we could all just send her love, prayers, healing, anything that occurs to us. Um, I really, I wasn't sure whether I should bring it up, but I asked the lady and she said she was, she was happy to. I just, I, she came on one of our calls once and so we only got to meet her fleetingly, but she's just such a beautiful young woman. And she, right now she could really do with some love and some prayers and some magic. Um, so if people wouldn't, wouldn't mind just for one minute, you can turn your camera off or close your eyes or whatever and um, just, just for one minute, send us some, some love. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And please tell her she's had love sent to her from all around the world, from many different people. really enjoyed this. And it's been it's just been really awesome to have all these people on. It's so nice to see some new faces as well and old friends all coming together. I love doing this kind of stuff because I get to learn. People say, oh, you're so selfless, Dave. So selfless, Jen. And we're like, no, we're not. We're doing something we love. It's the secret to life. How do you best serve God? Just do that that you love. whatever that is, if it's painting, if it's football, if it's golf, making magic potions, books, walking on the beach. Don't forget to enjoy it. Don't forget to enjoy this life. Before we know it, temporary manifestation of life, a force of magnificence. It comes to an end. And all the things we thought were so important, all the ambition, all the things we've 
thought was so important for us to be okay suddenly pale into insignificance as we lay there on the deathbed. I wouldn't mind just finishing with a poem if that's all right. It was a poem that I've always loved. All right, Rust. It's a by a poet, I think he, he again was Sufi, Persian, Islamic mystic poet. And his name was Kalidasa. And it's called Look to This Day. Look to this day, for it is life. The very life of life. In its brief course, like all the varieties and realities of your existence. The bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendour of achievement are but experiences of time. For yesterday is but a dream and tomorrow is only a vision. But today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well therefore to this day such is the salutation to the dawn. I remember reading that at college. Didn't really understand it. I loved it. Don't get too caught up in all this, what we've been speaking about. Everybody's already it. Nothing to find, it was never lost. just hidden behind what we think. And so I think we may do a follow up if people are interested, maybe next weekend. Yeah, that's good. Perhaps next weekend. A week from maybe a Saturday or something like that, a couple of hours or something, where if there is any questions that have come up or any observations, perhaps we can we can shed some light or we can share insights or whatever. Because, like I say, Jen and I are not experts. There's no experts in life. It's just life. Well, perhaps next Saturday we'll put something together and it'll just be a Zoom thing like this and we'll, those that want to, come back. Also everyone's always invited to a community group which is every other Thursday from 7 till 9 UK, um, which we try yeah. on. Yeah, um, details can be found at freedomthinking.co.uk. Jen and I could be got in touch by that. And excuse the website at the moment, but some yeah. it got hacked or something a couple uh, last week, and the web designer is trying to put everything back up, but the whole thing was taken offline. And not really, I don't really understand anything to do with web design, but he's had to go out and take viruses out and all kinds of things. So at the moment, the slide is not working and pictures aren't working, but the information to contact us is is on there. Yeah, if, if anybody wants to get in touch with Jen and I, freedomthinking.co.uk and info at freedomthinking.co.uk is our email. You find our phone numbers on there. Give us a ring. But thank you everybody for, um, for a lovely three days. You've made it really special. It's been a really beautiful group.
I just wanted to thank everyone for the different donations and 10% of everything that you've donated is going to Goodell with his charity in South Africa, yeah. Redeeming Hope for the Disabled, because he's just the most Absolutely. amazing man. So thank you, Doing you've been supporting work. him as yeah. well. So thank you everybody. Thank you guys. Thanks Lee. Thanks Kate, thanks for sharing sweetheart. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you everyone. Thank you all for your insights and kindness and love. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everybody. See ya. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.